Yes, let's talk about hockey, the show that journeys through the history of the sport of ice hockey from its disputed origins to the game we see today. Last time, we saw the old Ottawa Hockey Club jump around from league to league in the early 1900s before settling in the National Hockey Association in 1910. However, several years later, trouble in the association's boardroom spelled the end for the NHA and the beginning of Ottawa's membership in the new National Hockey League. Their first season in the NHL, however, began on a bad note. The players' contracts were for a 20-game season, but the league then lengthened the season to 24 games without adding more to the player contracts, and the protests that resulted from this delayed Ottawa's home opener. Luckily, though, negotiations went far enough to appease enough players that the home opener only started 15 minutes late. Ottawa would lose the game 7-4, and struggle the rest of the season, finishing in last place. Better performances from the club's stars in the 1918-1919 season, however, elevated Ottawa to the league championship playoffs against the Canadians. Unfortunately, due to a death in his family, star forward Frank Nyber would not play in the first three games of the best of seven series, and Ottawa would lose all three games. Upon Nyber's return for game four, Ottawa tallied a 6-3 win, but Montreal would end the series with a 4-2 victory in Game 5 for the league championship and right to play for the Stanley Cup. During the 1919-1920 season, Clint Benedict again led the league in goals against average, and Frank Nyberg's 25 goals landed him as the league's third best scorer. With these two paving the way, Ottawa finished in first place in both halves of the season, eliminating the need for a league playoff series. Back in the Stanley Cup series for the first time since 1915, Ottawa played host to the PCHA's Seattle Metropolitans. Ottawa would win the first two games by 3-2 and 3-0 scores respectively, but then drop the next two, sending the series to a decisive fifth game. However, thanks to a three-goal performance in Game 5 by Jack Dara, Ottawa pulled off a dominating 6-1 victory to claim their first Stanley Cup as a member of the NHL. Over the next three seasons, Ottawa would finish in first place each year, and add two more Stanley Cup titles to their shelf in 1921 and 1923, establishing the NHL's first dynasty. Aside from Clint Benedict and Frank Nyber, players like Sprague Cleghorn, Cy Denneny, King Clancy, and Jack Dara were also key to this Ottawa club's tremendous success. During the third game of the 1923-24 season, Ottawa skated for the first time in their new home arena, the Ottawa Auditorium, in what would be a 3-2 win over the Montreal Canadiens. This year, even though Ottawa would again finish in first place and Frank Nyber would win the first ever Hart Trophy for the league MVP, the club would lose to the Canadiens in the playoffs, with Georges Vesna shutting them down and the star rookie Howie Moren scoring three goals. After this disappointment, Ottawa dealt both Clint Benedict and Punch Broadbent to the new Montreal Maroons club in exchange for cash and replaced them with a pair of rookies, Alex Connell and Hooley Smith. Additionally, Ottawa would lose Jack Dura to retirement as well. With all of the changes taking place in the organization, the club was not able to put on as good of a performance on the ice as they had in recent years, and slipped down to fourth place in the league during the 1924-25 season. The 1925-26 season saw continued expansion into the U.S. for the NHL. This year, Alex Connell recorded 15 shutouts, and Cy Denneny scored 24 goals in 36 games to lead Ottawa back to a first-place finish. However, during the playoffs, they were held to only a single goal by their ex-teammate, Clint Benedict, and lost the series to the Montreal Maroons. In the 1926-27 season, the NHL expanded again and split into two divisions, the Canadian and the American. Under this new format, Ottawa went 30-10-4 to claim the Canadian division crown and got a bye into the semifinals of the playoffs, where they were matched against the Canadians in a two-game total goal series. In this series, Alex Connell held the Canadians to a single goal, 
while Ottawa put up five of their own to down Montreal and head to the first Stanley Cup Finals between two NHL teams. Their opponent, the Boston Bruins. Originally scheduled to be a best of three series, Ottawa and Boston would end up playing four games against each other after game one ended in a scoreless tie, when league president Frank Calder called the game due to poor ice conditions after two 10-minute overtime periods. After that game one draw, Ottawa would take games two and four to win the 1927 cup title thanks to Cy Denneny's four goals in the series and Alex Connell shutting down the Bruins offense. However, despite winning the Stanley Cup, Ottawa was having financial troubles. Being the smallest market in the league was bad enough, but the higher travel costs due to the league's expansion into the U.S., as well as the low turnout for home games against the new expansion teams, cost the club to lose $50,000 during their championship season. This led Ottawa to start playing some of their home games in other cities that had bigger arenas and a larger population in order to turn a profit. In the 1927-28 season, Ottawa won their second consecutive Canadian Division title, thanks primarily to Alex Connell, who posted a record-setting shutout streak that lasted six games, or more specifically, 460 minutes and 49 seconds. However, their season would end after their first playoff series against the Montreal Maroons. Things would begin to go downhill for Ottawa after that. During the 1928-29 season, the club sold Hooley Smith to the Maroons and Cy Denneny to the Bruins, and wound up finishing fourth in their division and out of the playoffs. The next two years, Ottawa continued to hemorrhage cash as they finished fifth in their division both years. During this time, they began openly selling more star players to make ends meet, including Frank Nyber and King Clancy. In order to help rebuild things, the Ottawa club suspended operations for the 1931-32 season, during which time they loaned their players to other clubs for additional cash. Ottawa returned to the league for the 1932-33 season, but once again finished dead last, an unfortunate feat that they repeated in the 1933-34 season as well. Former team captain Harvey Pulford was given an option to buy the team and move it to Baltimore, Maryland, but he never exercised that option. Then rumors began circulating that Ottawa would merge with the equally troubled New York Americans Club. However, after Ottawa's final game on March 18, 1934, it was announced that the club would relocate to St. Louis, Missouri for the 1934-35 season. This spelled the end of NHL hockey in Ottawa for 58 years, until the current Ottawa Senators began play in the 1992-93 season. But, the new Senators still honor the old with the 11 Stanley Cup banners that hang from their home rink rafters.